Am I the meanest? Sure now. Am I the prettiest? Sure now. Am I the baddest mofo low down around this town? Sure now. But who am I? Sure now. Who am I? Sure now. I can't hear you. Sure now. Yeah, that's right. Bow, sucker. Yeah. <laughs> Bows down to your master. Damn right. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 113 of the Hoopercast. It has been a long, <laughs> long time um, since we have heard from Michael Grayson, who is on the podcast with us today. And uh, Thanks for having me. Lifetimes uh, of a valley, a vast gap of sadness without you. Oh, you're now, making I- me blush. I, I would agree. I would agree. I I um I believe the last time we had you on, I think we were discussing the odd life of Timothy Green, <laughs> <laughs> where Jennifer Gardner drinks and drinks and drinks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh. Um, <laughs> um, just a pop filter a little bit. Um, well, we're back here today. Um, really, just to. Well, not really just to catch up. We obviously got a show. We got a bunch of stuff today. Um, For the sake of time, probably just going to focus on some film news. Um, And also we're going to have the – we also have the winner of the Letterboxd um, raffle, I guess we'll call it, the Letterboxd um, promotion. Yeah, promotional giveaway uh, that we will reveal later on in the episode and also the new code word for February. So uh, thank yeah. you to everyone who emailed us for a chance at it. And uh, that is super exciting. It is exciting. It's amazing. It is exciting for sure. And it, it really I'm, helps when, I'm digging it. when Letterboxd retweets, <laughs> you know, your stuff. Oh, right, yeah. right. Um, well, so, so the reason – so it's Thursday night now. Um, and the reason – I feel like I should give people some context. Uh, we were all set to record uh, last night, a Wednesday night as usual, and uh, everyone was ready. And yep. I was given the, the key to this uh, to this this little portion of the studio, and um, mm-hmm. and so when I came back to set everything up, the door was already unlocked, and I was like, "Oh, I guess they left it unlocked for me or whatever." I, you know, I came into the booth, I set everything up, um, and I was like, "You know what? I've 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 had a lot of water to try and prep my voice." So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go take a pee pee, and I'll come right back. And so I went out. This, and so when I when I initially set up the uh, the studio, I was like, I I locked the door from the inside. I was like, okay, well, we'll go ahead and lock that front door so no one comes in, you know, and interrupts me. Um, and I'll go out this little side door into the little hallway to get out to the bathroom, which you know, which also is one of those push locks. And so I went out there. And it was one of those. I, I told, I told my, I told uh, the person who gave me the key later. I was like, you know, it couldn't have been a more Seinfeldian sitcommy moment because it was one of those <laughs> things where I was like, the door shut unbelievably easily. It didn't even do that thing where like the the little latch like catches the door frame and slows down the momentum. It was like it wasn't even there. <laughs> and so I was closing it. And I was just like, I was like, all right, I'm gonna keep it. Wait, is this lock? And it click. I was like, oh. Oh no! Oh no! And so I was oh, like, "Well, that's no. cool. I've got the I've got the key." I walked around. It's the uh, wrong key, you know, because I was wondering. I was wondering what happened to you. I was wondering because you said you were locked out, and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know, man. I didn't want to ask too many questions. I know you're yeah. busy with your life or whatever. But like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, same my here. wife, my <laughs> wife kicked me out. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea. No, I didn't um, want to ask too many questions. It w- <laughs> um. Yeah, so and so I was like, okay, well, whatever. I've got the key in my pocket, thank God. So I walk over to the back to the 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 front, you know, the front door of that part of the studio, and it's the wrong key. It's not fitting. I'm like, are you serious? Oh no! And I was just like, is this why the door was unlocked in the first place? Because he knew he gave me the wrong key and realized it later, and so decided <laughs> to 
you know. And so I was just like, and I, I tried oh, wow. to open the door. I, I, I even like, I, 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 I seriously like, I did a half-assed attempt at breaking it. I was trying to fit like my driver's license into the lock. And, I was gonna say, oh I could just see God. you putting a credit card in and, there. And then after to get a while, in. I was just like, this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm gonna damage the door or whatever. And so I was, I was like asking people like, hey, can I use your phone to call some friends for like 45 minutes so I can record a, a 45 minute voice memo on my phone? And they're like, oh no. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm going to go home and just, I'm going to call it a night. And so I felt, I felt <laughs> right, like right. such a, such a dummy because I was like, man, everyone like worked really hard to free themselves up for the schedule and and it was, and I locked myself out. Like I locked myself out of a room. Like it's a stupid mistake. And uh, so then my next worry was, oh crap, what's in there? And thankfully, my car keys, wallet, all that stuff was was in another room that I could get to. And I was like, okay, well, at least I can drive home. At least I don't have to call like an engineer to come up here and explain why I need well, them to unlock this. Well, <laughs> right, no. Right. Ha- no harm, no foul. I'm glad that I can be here tonight. Thank you, boys, for for having me tonight. It's good yeah, to be yeah. back. Thanks for coming on. Indeed. Absolutely. Um. So. Well, anyway. Uh. You know, and boys, I got I got time for whatever, whatever you guys want to do. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, kick it off, Uber. Um, Furious Seven. I, I I do remember that. Well, there was Furious Seven. I did see Furious Seven. Um. Um. I, yeah, you know what? Let me talk briefly about that. I, I did have some thoughts. Um, Go ahead. I, I don't know how many of the Furious movies you guys have seen. Michael, I, I just... I'm All gonna, of... I was going to say, I, I'm going to profile you. I'm pretty sure you've seen more than Dustin has. Um, yeah, I've well, seen all of them. I've seen, yeah, but, I've seen yeah, but all see, but the Tokyo thing Jam. is, since I've seen none of them, pretty much everybody's seen more than me. Dude, there's yeah. beautiful women and fast cars. I mean, you can't really go wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, right, right, right. I'll say I'll say one thing about about the Furious franchise is <laughs> I'm I'm surprised that the franchise didn't die with Paul Walker. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's uh, it's it's it really is an interesting kind of thing because you know what I like about this franchise. Everyone talks a lot of a lot of smack about, about these movies, but I'm always like, they're real entertaining and they're self-aware, you know, that's really all I ask for in movies like this. Now, if they and, were like super, and you know what, man, the, they don't try to promote them or market them or turn them into anything that they are not, you know? Yeah. And, and that says, that says a lot about a filmmaker, you know? I mean, they, they are what they are. They're, they're movies. They have, they have pretty girls and fast cars and, and ridiculous techno music. But I mean, what more do you expect? Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, this, this <laughs> movie... It's true. Nobody goes into those expecting the Godfather. <laughs> exactly. Th- these movies aren't going to change your life, but damn yeah. it, they'll entertain you, you know? Right, right, right. Well, I went into this movie knowing full well what it was um, because around the fourth movie, but definitely by the fifth, they decided, hey, um, we can't really make movies about – well, actually, they realized this way back with the second one, which was, OK, we can't keep making movies that are – you know, fa- The Fast and the Furious was based around street racing, but you can't make a whole franchise off of that same concept. So it became like – you know. Like in the Fast and the Furious, Brian O'Connor is an undercover cop, and then in Too Fast, Too Furious, he's kind of he's sort of caught when he's on the lam, and then forced to work for for the police. I have not seen Tokyo Drift, so I don't know the premise of that. I I know that they're not. Dude, in it. you have got to get into Tokyo Drift, man. I, I, really I think that you should. I think that was one of my favorites, man. Really? But then again, I'm into yeah, yeah. I, it it really, really was the 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 sound design for that picture just. The, the production design for that picture, it was just incredible, man. They they filmed it in Tokyo. They filmed it in the mountains of Tokyo. I mean, and, you know, I'm a Texas boy. All right, boys? I'm a Texas right, boy. Right, right, right. <laughs> and the the lead of that movie is a cowboy, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I could, right, right. I could feel him, you know? Well, I I think I didn't see it because I was – for me, when that came out, my assumption was, oh – so they're not going to they're going to continue the franchise but they're not going to have the stars. So I think I was turned off yeah, by um, what I thought would be a permanent um uh n- exclusion of Paul Walker and Vin Diesel. And so and I just never hopped back onto it after I fell back into the franchise, but I ought to go back and watch it. 
um, with this film, I knew what I was getting into. Um, and I, but I, I, I do have to say that when it was done, I did feel disappointed. Um, the more I think about it, the more it's obvious why certain things happen. Um, well, number one, Paul Walker died and they weren't done filming. Um, right. And so they, this is, this is well known, but they were like, okay, so what are we going to do with this character? Are we going to kill him off? And then they decided we're not going to kill him off. We're going to retire the character, you know? Yeah. Brian's going to walk gonna away. He's going to have a family and a wife. Yeah. And yeah. All that, yeah. So, and it, uh, and so that they, would have been too dark. That yeah. That would have been, been way real too messed dark. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, so they got, I think, a total of four actors, two of whom were his <laughs> brothers. Um, to, I'm just thinking, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm just thinking about if they would have killed him off, like how. Yeah, how dark that would have yeah. been. Yeah, well, the exact same way too. Like he crashes a Ferrari or something. Like that would have been. Oh my gosh, dude! Know. I I heard oh, the wow. worst. Yeah. I heard the most offensive Paul Walker joke I've heard in a minute, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say it, dude. But it's it's <laughs> it's in poor taste. It's in poor taste. So there's a disclaimer, everybody listening. I'm about to tell you a joke in poor taste. All right, here here's the joke. Okay. I li- I like the word race car because if you take it. And you and you turn it around, you still have the word race car. But if you take the word race car and you turn it sideways, you kill Paul Walker. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Oh, no. How bad is that, dude? I told you, I told you that was in poor taste. Oh no. <laughs> Well, sorry, um, sorry. It, it, in the spirit of that, um, on that note, can yeah. we talk about Jason Statham <laughs> uh, now? Well, yeah. Well, so, uh. hold, hold on. Let me finish with Paul Walker while we're still, uh, so I can bring it back after we okay, dishonored yeah. him and desecrated his body. <laughs> um, we uh, so they got four actors who resembled him physically, and I think two of them were actually his brothers to essentially yeah, that's correct shoot the remaining scenes and sort of tweak the story a little bit, um, and. I have I do have to say just Paul Walker's death aside like it it the movie obviously did have a very big feel of this was rewritten in post you know because but yeah. but, but but for a very you know tragic and unavoidable reason so I mean I'm not going to lie when I say, you know I do have to say it does hurt the film I'm, I again I I realize what I'm saying and it was not their intent that Paul Walker not survive the filming um right but um it, it, it you know it does hurt the film and and it did feel a little bit a little bit just sort of disconnected and um more like a bunch of vignettes than an actual story whereas the past two of them you know they had a plot and they had the characters and they had the stunt work but it was all in context of this story and this one felt a little bit more disjointed but i really do attribute that mostly to um you know the death of paul walker um but i guess having him sort of walk away from, from that kind of life was, uh, I'll say this. I couldn't tell which scenes weren't him. I mean, they got, I mean, Dustin, I don't know if you know the no. extent of this, but they got, yeah, yeah. they got the stand-ins who already look a lot like him, but digitally they sort of like, they sort of made the pitch of his, the voices. It sounded like him. Not once did he speak and I go, well, that's not him. Or that's clearly modulated. Really? Wow. And not once did I look at him and go, that's not Paul Walker because they got Weta digital to basically piece his face together onto other people. It was, it was, and, and, and it was, this is no, like, this is not like a Tron legacy, Jeff Bridges clue kind of thing going on here. This is, I was right. looking at it and I was like, I have no idea when these were shot. Like, was this him or was this the oh, stand in? Wow. And there was a cup. there's maybe one time, um, because there's a couple of one-on-one conversations with Jordana Brewster. And I was like, well, these obviously had to have been after the fact because they deal almost exclusively with the idea of him, um, you know, walking away and being home and there for his kids. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, this is, pre- this, this is pretty heavy handed. So I'm assuming this was a reshoot, um, you know, mm-hmm. or to skew the plot towards his character's exit. Computers are terrifying yeah, what they can it, do with it's, computers it's these nuts. days. Is I, they could very probably, scary. They could I mean with with the amount of technology they put into it, they could put, they could have kept him in the franchise and just had like someone else play him. It's eerie. Right, absolutely. which is super scary. Well, to think uh, that like in, in 10 years we could have like a new Humphrey Bogart movie. 
Oh, oh my this gosh. is ridiculous. Don't, even, don't you put that evil on us. <laughs> don't put that out there, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> yeah, please, please don't wish that upon us. You well, know, speaking of of remakes or whatever, you know, David Bowie just died or whatever, and they're talking about rebooting the Labyrinth. I'm sorry to yeah. get off topic or whatever, but did I, you guys hear that? I also I heard, did. Oh, I also what a terrible that, idea! I also heard that wasn't actually true, but I remember when the story well, first came out. I, I have no idea. I, I think it's a horrible idea. I don't know. Like, I swear to God, if they cast somebody like Justin Bieber, I'm just going to eat a bullet. Yeah, <laughs> just at the end it all. <laughs> Why, man? Justin Bieber's every bit as talented as Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> Am I alone? Am I the only one? I can't no, be the only one. I have to admit, well, I, I'm a believer. As here's well. another good thing. Here's a good thing about about Justin Bieber. Okay, <laughs> Justin Bieber is Canadian. The one good right? thing. Yeah, uh, right. Justin Bieber is Canadian. We all know Justin Bieber is Canadian. But are you aware? The Canadians are are known for saying sorry, right? Yes. Right, right. Justin Bieber had a number one chart, you know, number one track on the Billboard charts. It was called Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> really? Did you guys know the yeah, No, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry for I'm dead serious. for my behavior <laughs> my entire life. <laughs> but no, back back to Furious Seven though. Do you guys remember the scene where uh, Vin Diesel and Jason Statham have a head on collision, and then they get out of the car and then they beat each other up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was one of the most amazing scenes was, I've ever seen in like, my life. This is like a three hundred thousand dollar car you're driving. What the fuck is wrong with you? What are you doing, <laughs> dude? It was like a it was like an Aston Martin. Or a Maserati or something, yeah, and like D- Dustin, Vin Diesel's driving like some American muscle yeah, like, or whatever. Like, yeah, and like a just, GTO. Yeah. Head on yeah. collision, yeah. man. Yeah. And then they get out of the car and they fist fight. They're, they're basically, <laughs> Dustin, what's happening is like, you know, they, they're he, Vin Diesel's chasing after Jason Statham, and then for some reason they find themselves like under a bridge or something, and they're, yeah, like they're basically a playing, or whatever. They're yeah. basically playing chicken, which has been done in uh-huh. Fast and the Furious before, but this time. They just both like they just drive each other and they just collide. <laughs> they collide, dude. Head on collision. <laughs> Most ridiculous shit ever. Oh wow. And I was God just, I'm, love just sitting, them. I'm just sitting there like, why? <laughs> you know. Like, That's awesome. So uh, you know, uh it was uh it was an interesting movie. You, to this- anybody out there. To anybody out there who has not seen Furious 7, please go to Redbox. Please go to Amazon. <laughs> please go to Voodoo. Whatever. You know, you know what's crazy? Please rent it and drink what's, and what's watch cr- that movie. <laughs> what's nuts about this Man. is I was I was going to give this movie a bad review, Michael, but you refused to let me to let me like uh, give this movie a thumbs down. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to fold and say, sure, go rent it. <laughs> no, please go rent it. No, it's an, it's a wild ride. It's a wild ride, and do it in honor of Paul Walker or whatever, man. It's, man, know, y'all are making me want to watch them all, man. They're 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 really Dude, they're really entertaining. Like they they are, no. and like and I mean, the first one obviously is giving me the weirdest because it's just like it's just outdated in terms of like cultural references and stuff. But like right around at four, when they bring Vin Diesel back and Paul Walker back, um, yeah, that's when they start getting. That's when that's why I first because I saw uh, I saw. The fourth one is called Fast and Furious, and I saw that one in theaters. And I remember coming out and going like, mm. "Hey, that was that was pretty good." <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think I think all the Marvel movies are smarter. I mean, Fast and Furious to me are somewhere around the entertainment and intellectual prowess of the Transformers movies to me. Um, prob- oh my god! <laughs> probably, oh my probably, god. probably a little bit above them. Like in terms, like the Transformers movies are kind of dumb, but they're real actiony. The action's really cool, but there's a lot of vignettes mm-hmm. of dumb. Furious is it, the Furious, the Fast and Furious franchise. They're all well paced, and they are all action packed, and they actually have characters that yeah, you yeah. like. And there's just a little yeah, bit of like, of, you know, of like one liners where you're like, okay, okay, let's go, come on. But but most of it is right. like, oh, this is cool. Oh, that's cool. You know, I hate Michelle Rodriguez. Really, I just want you to know that. I Why? despise her. Why? I don't hate her, but I, I'm very indifferent to her. Ana Lucia. Dude, she has she has less emotion than Kristen Stewart. Oh man, you guys, <laughs> you guys are breaking my heart. I, 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 
Man, I'm just thinking about Lost, and she was just kind of so so on Lost, really. Yeah. And then and then in in and then in Avatar, like well, she didn't do anything. Yeah, no, she didn't. No, nope, that's not, that's not true, Dustin. She dies. She does oh, right. die. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but I refuse to go How see another you? Transformer movie. I refuse to go see another Transformer movie because I am done supporting Michael Bay's crippling cocaine habit. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but did are are you aware though that the guy who directed Furious Seven? Uh, do you know about this guy, James? James his, his name was James. James Wan. You know he was the executive producer from Saw two to seven. Yeah, he directed. Really? Um, he directed Insidious and The Conjuring. Yeah, yeah. He did a lot of stuff. He's he's working on uh, The Conjuring two right now. which yeah. I loved The Conjuring. I thought it was a great picture. But, it really, it really was uh, a I good movie. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, but he he also did that. You know, uh, I don't know what I what I want to say too much about because I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> give us get us off topic or anything. But you are aware that they're coming out with a Mortal Kombat movie, right? Um, oh, for real. Oh, they are coming out with a live action Mortal Kombat movie that is supposed to be incredible. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And they James did. Wan is producing it. Yeah, I was going to say there was something some sort of like digital series or something online is that is that related to that, do you think? <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. I don't want to say yes or no to that. I I am unaware of the the web the webisodes of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Regardless. I heard the I heard the webisodes were awesome, so I wonder if it's related. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah. Huh. Well, That's exciting, though. But and and a, a good uh, segue, which I'll go ahead and mention, but we can get into later, mm-hmm. is James Wan is also directing Aquaman. No way. I yeah, wonder yeah. how interesting. I wonder how interesting that story will be. I have no idea. I wonder how many it, people all I know will is, see hanging from creepy trees in Aquaman. I don't know. As a segue right. from Aquaman, did you boys see Ant Man with yes, Paul I did. Rudd? Yes, I did. And and I'm sure you guys have already talked about it. We did. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the the general the general opinion of that was what from uh, us. I think uh, Hooper liked it more than I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the general opinion, uh, the, the the if if you were to combine our opinions of it, I would probably be the the movie was um, the movie was fun, and um, the smaller scale was refreshing. But uh, as as always, the villain was kind of uh, non effective and um, and uh, something else. <laughs> Um, I, and I, and I thought it kind of just retreaded very familiar territory and yeah. didn't really bring us anything new or interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to punch Paul Rudd in the face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I don't, I'm Man, sorry. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll tell you this though. I, I think Paul Rudd was, was, uh, one I of the better parts of that to... movie though. <laughs> <laughs> I think Paul Rudd wanted to punch Paul Rudd in the face. <laughs> Pro- probably, probably. <laughs> uh. But speaking, speaking of that, Onto Deadpool with Ryan Reynolds. That is a movie I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm yeah, with man. you. Uh, I, I think Dustin's a little more, a little uh, cautiously skeptical. Dustin's, okay. yeah, yeah, Dustin's yeah, yeah. open minded, but uh, not a fan of the uh, the character himself. Yeah, not yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a big Deadpool fan. Okay, okay. Well, is but, it that you're not a Deadpool fan, or you're not a Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool fan? Uh, it's Deadpool himself. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Like, like for me, like you know, I, I guess it's probably just the fact that uh, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. My my feelings about Deadpool are complicated. We'll leave no, it at that. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can leave it there. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But regardless, it's gonna be. I, but I, I will say this, and I, and I think I think I told said this on the podcast at one point uh, that I th- I think that this film looks really good, which is shocking to me to that I can even say that. Okay, well I'm going to be really really disappointed because if the movie 
is not as good as their marketing campaign, I'm going to be heartbroken because their marketing campaign for this film is, is phenomenal. Is a ph- yes, it is phenomenal. So I hope the movie is at least as good as the marketing campaign for this picture. Did you fellas see the um, the the little? I guess it was like a little. I don't know a YouTube promo or whatever for it, where uh, it was for Australia Day. Did you I see? I watched this? that like no. It, I watched that like a half hour ago. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. He, call, he calls that. out Hugh Jackman in it, and uh, yeah, really? it's, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he, talk, he talks that. about how the Wolverine movie was like for him as Deadpool. The Wolverine movie was the low point of his career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now is that, is that something I can find on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, totally. it's actually. I think okay. it's trending. Like, if you if you just went onto Facebook, it's probably on the side where all the news stuff is. Okay, cool. I'll have um, to look at that. Well, anyway, uh, Fury Seven was good, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I I was, I don't know. It was better than Furious Six when they had that. I think it was Furious Six. I don't know. Don't quote me. It's kind like, of tough for to like tell after a while. Forty five minutes for like forty five minutes. They're driving on a runway, and it's like this is the longest. Damn runway! I've yeah. ever seen him like what? Yeah, like, yeah. I, was I remember, it, was I remember, that Furious Seven? After, I don't remember. After that movie came out, there were multiple reports online that were like, "Okay, so based on the, their approximate speed and the amount of time they were driving, the runway would have had to be in like twenty six miles long or something, like something oh my insane, God. like some some insane That's level of, of track, like." Like the, that, they're, they're that was Furious Six where that happened, right? Yeah, yeah. That's where Wonder Woman okay. dies. Um. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, um, Dustin. It's not like they're. It's not like it's a shock when it happens, really. So I'm. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't, um, I don't care, man. Um, also, Paul Walker dies in Fury Seven, so spoiler alert for that. Um, hey, so, so hey, but, hey, but you know, hey. you know what I did like though is it's a low in, blow, Hoover. In Fast Five, um, when they're driving through the streets and they're dragging the safe behind the safes behind the cars, and they're just like smashing yes. into trees and like mailboxes yes. and stuff. That's so cool. I love that. Um, you're not you're not wrong. Yeah, I recommend the Furious franchise overall, and uh, Seven was weaker than the previous couple, but for good, for for at least one large understa- understandable reason. But like, I just felt I don't know. I just I was a little disappointed, you know. Because I even with what I, even with knowing what to expect from them, I still feel like they fell short of, you know, of what they have offered in the past and what they delivered on in the past. But anyway, um, now that's that's the most recent one, correct? There's not another one. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, they're working on eight. They're, 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 they're on eight. Which... They're doing eight, nine, and ten. Like they're doing at least ten of these. Oh my god! Are you oh, serious? Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're they're still doing more of them. Uh... And, and I remember when Vin Diesel started like executive producing them like he was he told the universal asked him like what his goal was and he goes i want to get through 10 you know um, wow and, and 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 i you know it's not like they're incredibly academy award level acted um or written <laughs> but, um, but say, uh, i mean to say the least yeah, right <laughs> yeah um you know i hope i'm not splitting hairs but um but I, they at least they're starting to tie themselves around a theme, like at least at least they've they've decided that their theme, like you know, because at a certain point someone must have asked them, hey, what's like what's what's your uh, what's what are these movies about? And then Vin Diesel is just like, uh, family, and you know, it, it was decided on it was decided on that the theme was family somehow. This movie about street racing was like gonna have a family theme. And it was essentially about like how all of them are like family and blah blah blah. And so it makes sense when they send off Paul Walker that it's for the reason of family. So it was a really yeah. sweet, you know, send off for him at the end of the movie because you know when when they, they when, did they honored him right, you know they really did him right. Um, yeah, they did him right. But it was funny you said that you know it's not it's not some kind of Academy nominated picture. No, it's it's I not would, like I'm sitting here going dude. like oh the movies are so. They're heart, a heartfelt uh, movie about family. Ma- it's just like, no, it's just Michelle- a theme to keep them going. But 
Michelle Rodriguez nominated for Best Actress in Furious <laughs> 7. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? But you know what, you know what, you know uh. what though? This ties in. This is the last thing I'll say and we can move on. But this ties into my theme about like what, what, what regular people want to see in theaters versus what like – elite academy voters think that people want to see yeah. in theaters because this yeah. f- this film won favorite movie of the year at the people's choice awards this year um did it really it, oh, wow. it did and vin diesel went up and accepted the award and he talked about paul some and but one of the things he said was like i mean you guys picked this as your favorite movie of the year and i'm just sitting there thinking like why do people even watch the Academy Awards? Like, because, because it seems like, and, and I know that stuff like that just angers like Academy voters, but it's like, look, dude, people just want to see a movie. And sometimes they just want to see a movie where they're going to get to see some cool stunts and some cars and, you know, Paul Walker run up a bus as it falls off a cliff and jump. And then, dude, I and told then, you. and then for Michelle Rodriguez to, to, thing, dude. to pull it's boobs and fast cars, man, Dustin, there's an insane stunt. It's, it's in, it's in the trailer. Where yeah, Paul I was saying, I've seen the trailer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he, so for the listeners, he he's inside a big bus. It's falling off the side of a gigantic cliff. He somehow gets on top of it. He starts <laughs> running up it like Wiley e. Coyote, and uh, Michelle Rodriguez <laughs> is coming at is driving at him at like seventy miles an hour. Throws the car like like pulls like a J turn where she spins the where she she turns and the back wheels of the car are like on the edge of the cliff. Paul Walker jumps, grabs onto the spoiler on the back of her car, and survives. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> so go go see this movie. Um, and uh, yeah, in, in the red box. Um, please please let's watch take this a movie. second, Dustin. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I did. I'm so sorry I monopolized the subject matter tonight. Um, no, it's all right. Let me talk real quick. I'm just uh, along for the ride. Let's go ahead and do our do our uh, do get to take care of our business. Let's do it. So this podcast is sort of brought to you by Letterboxd. Right now, our listeners of our show have the chance to win a free one year pro account upgrade or extension on Letterboxd. For those of you who do not know, Letterboxd is a social network for film lovers. It lets you track, rate, and review the films you watch, follow other members to get recommendations, publish lists of films, and plenty more. And the thing about it, it's not like, you know, oh, I, I've got people on, I, people on Facebook can like the kind of movies that they have, and you can see who else likes, you know, um, Furious 7 and be friends with them. But Letterboxd is specifically about that. There's people don't post about politics on Letterboxd. They're not, you know, showing cat videos or pictures of their kids, you know, like me. They're, 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 they're talking about movies <laughs> purely, you know? And so it's, it's, it's specifically for, for film lovers. And I think that's a really cool thing. And it's also cool is it's free to use, but. A pro account provides additional features such as a customized summary of your past year's viewing. If you want to enter this contest, um, because we pick a winner at the end of every month, and actually, it is now the end of January. We have a winner for January. This person will get a free – you know what? I'll go ahead and tell you who it is. Uh, drum That's roll, exciting. please. Oh yes, the winner <laughs> of the January, uh, the January uh, promotion for, um, for Letterboxd is Tom Cassidy. Oh snap! If you want to follow him, or yeah, on Letterboxd, he is T Sires T S I R E S on Letterboxd. So if you want to see what Tom Cassidy loves, what kind of movies he's into, um, just go pop over. Onto uh, T Sires on Letterboxd, follow him, read his reviews, and um, see what he does with his free uh, one-year pro account now that he now has, thanks to Hoopercast and the letter and Letterboxd. Uh, anyway, if you want to be like Tom That's and huge. you want to win next week or next well next month, um, then you can email us. At hoopercast at gmail.com, H O O P E R C A S T at gmail.com for your chance to win. Uh, what's going to be the code word for uh, February, Dustin? Uh, the code word for February um, is Paul. Paul? Yeah, Paul, sure. Yes, yeah, Paul. It's Paul, Paul Walker. Paul. We've been talking about Paul Walker. All right, fine. There you go. That'll work. I was going to pick something like Beluga Whale, but Paul Walker's good. No, we can we can absolutely do Beluga Whale. Okay. We have to think of something. <laughs> how, about, how about a Beluga Whale named Paul? There we go. That'll work okay. too. 
Okay, I need that's to... no, that's too much. That's, I'm that's, sorry. That's really I'm wordy. a guest here. I don't think people Forgive can. Me. I don't think people can can spell beluga. I want to like. No, like, I don't oh, think anybody got the code word beluga. right, but you didn't spell it correctly. So I, I'm afraid we can't. <laughs> after. Um, that's part of it. We have you technicalities know the, in our radio know the code show, word, but you have to know its proper spelling. Um, no. Well, okay. Well, no. pick a code about, word. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. I'm not. I'm not in this. Let's do Paul. Let's do Paul. That's okay. Paul's good. Um. So if you want to, so email us, put the, uh, the code word Paul in the subject line, and please do not forget to give us your letterbox username in the email so that we actually know, you know, who to pick. Because there are people who emailed us, and unlike Tom Cassidy, T. Sires on Letterbox, unlike him, they didn't give us their information. So I was just like, okay, well, I had too many, I couldn't get back to every person and say, do that. I, I put out a billion tweets about, hey... Remember, send this to me, and none of those people ever got back to me and said, "Oh, never mind. Here's my stuff." So sorry, but I'm only picking from the people who actually followed the, the instructions. And Tom Casty's one of them. Congratulations, <laughs> Tom Casty. Um, so yeah, congratulations oh. to our winner. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, congratulations. You can Tom. follow him. What, you can follow us. Wait, Tom Cassidy. Tom Cassidy, congratulations, buddy. Yes, yes, and you can follow him. And uh, announce his uh, letterbox name one more time. T. Sires on letterbox. T. S. I. R. E. S. Um, so follow him. Follow us also at Hoopercast on Letterboxd. And uh, that's letterbox.com, L-E-T-T-E-R-B-O-X-D dot com. We put up all our reviews on Letterboxd. We'll probably put up a Furious 7 one, which will probably consist of... I'm going to have to write it like a person who's hearing voices, where like the first person is like, <laughs> well, here's a bunch of... Pro-, and the other guy goes like, hey, man, it was it was awesome. It kicked ass. And then I go, yeah, it did. And that's that's what that <laughs> review is going to be like for, for <laughs> Furious 7. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's Letterboxd. Um, uh, code word Paul. Um, Dude, I have so many things to talk about. If you I know, I know, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to have you on again soon, Michael. Um, let's do, Dustin. You want to do one quick story, and then we we may just have to hold over some of this other stuff for for. Uh, hey, time. I, I say, I say, let Michael talk about whatever whatever is on his mind. Michael, what have you been watching lately? Dude, Penny Dreadful on Showtime. And okay. I know I'm late to the party. I know I'm late to the party, but I'm two episodes in, and I am hooked, man. We got Dracula. We got Frankenstein. We got you know, you know Henry Jekyll. We got uh, what's his name, the Jack the Ripper. I mean, we got all these guys in this show that come together and mesh. You know, as a British American horror drama, it is just. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Have is you that, guys uh, have you guys gotten into that? Is that Eva Green? It is. Yes. Is that, yeah. Yeah. Actually, she plays a she plays a lady named Vanessa Ives, I believe. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. I've, have I've you heard guys heard watched it? it? I, I've heard. I've never seen it. I've heard it's good. No, I've never Dude. seen it either. But uh, Timothy Boys. Dalton's in it too. Boys, I am telling you, it is incredible. It is. And like I said, I'm only two episodes in, man. And like, you know, I don't do the whole werewolf, vampire, dragon. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. But this show, it's on point, dude. It starts Daniel Day Lewis, man. I mean, it's got Dorian Gray. And I mean, it is just absolutely incredible. So Penny Dreadful is definitely something to keep your eye out for. Oh, awesome. Like I said, I'm, I'm only two hours in. Get on it, okay? Next thing I want to talk about <laughs> is Star Wars Episode Seven. All right, talk about it. Okay. I'm going to talk about the sound guy. You boys know me. Where did we go to school? What did I get my degree in? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. We, we got All you. All right. Yeah. I was so disap- – I mean the movie was great, but I was so disappointed <laughs> in John Williams' score. Really? It sounded like regurgitated garbage music from Ooh. episode four. I was not impressed with his music, and he was nominated for best score this year. 
Well, there goes wow. uh, there goes John Williams' listenership for our show. <laughs> That's uh, it. I'm well, like, done with this. No, dumb number one show. fan. Jo- number one fan. John Williams. <laughs> Click unsubscribed. <laughs> he, he's Just sitting like, down in his Uber Cash shirt, really, like ball really cap. Disappointed. <laughs> Unfollow. Right, next topic I wanted to talk about: Mad Max Fury Road, nominated for best sound. I thought that was incredible. I thought yeah. Mad Max was a was a mediocre picture. I thought it was all right. Yes. I love the fact that Mad Max brought back practical effects for the first time in a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was one of its biggest uh, virtues. I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I thought it sounded good. Next thing, I sat down with a buddy and we had we had some drinks <laughs> and we watched <laughs> uh, we watched a movie. It was uh it was uh it was a movie from 85 called The Last Dragon. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, it was a movie from 85 called The Last Dragon, and it was about a kid in New York City, right? Who's, it was a black kid in New York City who's, like, doing kung fu or whatever and goes through the whole, you know, the whole uh, motions or whatever of becoming a kung fu master to reach his final level where he glows, Okay, he would he glows. Okay, it was the most ridiculous. <laughs> it was the most ridiculous movie I have seen in a long time. Okay, but it's from '85. It's called The Last Dragon. And guys, guys, is is a black kid who, who stars in it. Okay, he's a, he's a main character. What is his character's name? Uh, oh man. Is it is it Son Goku? No, it's <laughs> Bruce. It's Bruce Leroy. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right. So oh, no. you you gotta watch it. There's a character in there called Show Enough, right? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Who's the yeah, master? It is, oh, it was no. absolutely one of the best movies I've seen. I watched it with my buddy Ryan Sternfrells from L.A. He's out there. He's doing big things. He came. He came home for Christmas, and and we played a drinking game and watched that game. And it was, it was one of the best times I have had in a long time. Really you know what's awesome. great? What's great is I just pulled it up on YouTube, and I'm watching the final fight, and it is hilarious. <laughs> This is, is this is hilarious. <laughs> like every time they punch, there's like sparks and like <laughs> like these hilarious like like, like huge flashes incredible. of light. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> Villain okay. looks like Eddie Murphy in Raw. Oh yeah, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. All right, and then and then there was another there was another throwback I watched recently, which I watched it with my boy Ryan Ballantyne up in Oklahoma City. And we watched Army of Darkness from 92 starring okay. Bruce Campbell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you boys – when was the last time you all saw that? I've never Long seen it. Long time, man. You've never seen it? Mm-mm. Bruce Campbell plays Ash? Because yeah. because I know that they just dropped like Ash versus the Evil Dead or whatever and I haven't yeah, seen yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that either. Hooper, you seen that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that either. You're busy looking up the last dragon, aren't you? I'm, yeah, I'm trying he to is. find the last dragon. <laughs> he is. The, on YouTube, it's the last dragon, final fight. Oh, my God. It's so amazing. I'm actually going to pull it up right now. <laughs> hey, okay, I am on. actually going to pull let's it up all, right now. Let's all pull it Let me see if I, can, yeah. if I can pull I don't have – hold on. Now I don't have Wi-Fi on this computer. I'll have to watch it later. Final scene. No, dude. It's, it's the most amazing thing ever. Yeah, he like almost dance fights, you know. I'm just gonna skip forward here. I, I'm just still laughing oh at Bru- Bruce Leroy. All right, do you remember? <laughs> do you know what Dave Chappelle looks like as Charlie Murphy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what the villain looks like. <laughs> You're <laughs> right. Like yeah. Dave Chappelle as Charlie Murphy. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'm that telling you it. guys, if y'all have not seen The Last Dragon, please, please go see it. It's from '85. It's it's black, you know. It's it's. Oh my god! It's just so amazing. That's it's awesome. a cult film. It's it's an hour and fifty minutes. Like it's just incredible. Well, that's awesome. Um, I I do have to put it to bed at this point. Um, in the night. Um, Michael, you need to come back next week. 
Yeah, I'm I'm totally here. I'm absolutely here. I'd love you to do to, it. You need to come awesome, back. Awesome. This uh, this time flew by too much, too fast. No, guys, thank too you furious. for having me. I have a really really great time with you guys, and y'all are a lot of fun, man. And I'm sorry it's been so many years since we've actually been face to face drinking a beer. That's all right. It's That's all, all right. We'll make up for lost time. Absolutely. Well, right. I would hey, love well, to. Uh, I, I would love I, to to get my radio wife on here. I know she's got a lot of things to say. So yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that next time <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah. So hey, one more one more little piece of trivia for you. Um, yeah. The guy that directed the Last Dragon, he's still working. He's directed seven episodes of Arrow. Oh, really? Yeah, that's that's impressive. I heard. I haven't watched Arrow. I've heard it's incredible. I heard it's something I need to get into. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You you've got you've got to deal with a, a little bit of drama here and there. You know, some some CW kind of drama, but uh, but okay. yeah, it's pretty legit. All right. That's well, let fantastic. me let me now, uh, let me sign. The, oh, sorry. I, I I really do have to go. Um, but I got um, you. Let's uh let's just say that yeah. Let let's have you back next week, Michael. If you can do that, that'd be great. Yeah, same time, same place. Let's do Wednesday next week. Yeah, we'll try for Sounds Wednesday, good to me. and I won't lock myself out of this room. Good. <laughs> All right, well, um, thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, stay tuned next week for the return of Michael Grayson and uh, also yeah. me and Dustin. <laughs> thank you. And um, yes, and and more and, and and the movie news we promised you last week um, that I that we'll actually talk about and other some other stuff too. It's all good. Woo! All right. Whoa. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, everybody. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Bow, sucker. Yeah.